Hello, I'm Reginald from Froglogic and I'm talking here about behavior-driven GUI test automation, which is the main new feature of the upcoming Squish version 6.0. But first, let's see what actually is behavior-driven development and testing. The whole point of this approach is to focus everything on the application's behavior and specification and clearly separate from the implementation details of the application. So this means tests or test descriptions are done in a human-readable domain-specific language called Gherkin. And with that, we provide a clear separation between the test logic, which are the so-called so feature files in the Gherkin language, and the test implementation, which is usually done in a scripting language. And with this approach, also non-programmers can create tests and get involved into the testing process. Those feature files, which define the tests um, uh, for the purpose of our test automation, also can serve various other usages. This uh, can be used for feature specifications, defining user stories, for communication between customers, users and developers, and many other purposes. Such a feature file looks like what you see in the screen now. So it starts off with the keyword feature, defining the feature which shall be tested. Each feature is usually made up of one or more scenarios, and uh, each scenario again is made up of several steps. So here we have an example feature which will test a mapping application and test to go to a certain location, and one scenario would be to navigate to a given address. And the steps, again, can be split into so-called precondition, action, and expectation steps. So precondition steps start with the given keyword, action steps start with the when keyword, and expectation steps start with the then keyword. And you can combine several steps um, for preconditions, actions, or expectations using an AND keyword. And other than that, you're completely free in uh, describing the steps in uh, a human readable text. So there, there are no limitations to that. And uh, the implementation of such steps will look like what you see in the screen here now. That example is in the Ruby language, um, but as said, any other script language can be used as well. And here you see that using the text of a step, um, uh, the step is mapped to a script function, which is then implemented using script API. So when running the test, um, uh, Squish will know which uh, function to call by matching the text of the steps. So what exactly have we done in Squish to support the approach of behavior-driven development and testing, or in short, BDD? First, we've implemented full support for feature files written in Gherkin. Um, so this is 100% compatible with um, uh, the Gherkin files, which are being used in tools like Cucumber, Behave, and so on. So in case you have already existing uh, feature files, you can um, reuse them in Squish with no changes. Then the test steps can be implemented in any of Squish scripting languages. So we provided uh, or provide the same support of uh, scripting for BDD in Python and Ruby and JavaScript in Perl and TCL. And finally, the most visible part uh, of our work is the IDE support, which we've implemented for BDD. It starts off with a very rich editor for Gherkin file uh, editing, um, with completion, with syntax highlighting, lots of hints and helper tools. And then one thing which is very unique about Squish BDD support is um, that steps can be recorded. Um, in most uh, BDD frameworks, the step implementations have been done by manually coding the script code. But what we have done is to integrate our recording and verification point editor tools with BDD. So it is very convenient to record step implementations. And you will see that in a moment uh, when I do the live demonstration. And then finally, we have improved our reporting a lot, so our HTML reports look much nicer now for any Squish test, but specifically also for BDD, we have done a lot of work there. And the IDE also does uh, very nice reporting for BDD tests, where the steps within the feature files get highlighted with colors depending on whether they passed or failed on test execution. But with that, let's go into the live demonstration so you can see how BDD works from within Squish. So now I'm up and running with the new Squish IDE and I've already created a new and empty test suite for a QML-based map viewer application which we want to test and chosen Ruby as the script language. Now I go ahead and create a new test case 
and as of this new Squish version, you can choose between a pure script test case or a behavior-driven test case, which is what we're going to do. So I give this a name, test um, location, and this creates a new Gherkin file and already inserts a template for me so I could get started quite easily. But instead I'll replace that um, with the feature and scenario description which I have already prepared. Um, so we want to test the feature go to location and the scenario shall navigate to a given address. What the editor also shows me is that none of the step implementations can be found so far, so if I would run the test now, I would only get errors. Now to implement those steps, I can use Squish's recording functionality. So I just click record here, and this launches my um, application or test, and also gives me the control bar of Squish. And what you notice, what's different here now is, to previous versions, that you see the steps of the scenario displayed in the um, control bar and the uh, first step which is not implemented is highlighted and it uh, was blinking to ask me to record this step now. So I will now record the given the map application is running step. And what I will do in here is just to pr uh, choose a certain map provider so we get valid mapping data and then I'm done with this first step, so I click this and record button for the highlighted step. Now I shall record the next step, which is entering the given address. Um, to do that, I click into Tools and Geocode, clear the box and enter the address. And now I'm done with this step, so I click End Recording for this step. This gets me to the next step, where I should verify that um, the address has been found in the district risen. And to do that, I will insert a verification for the text of this message box. So I go to Insert Verification, Insert a Property Verification, and then I get the Squish Spy, which you know from previous Squish releases already. Pick the message box and um, choose the text property for verification. This will, for now, do a verification on the whole text of the uh, of the message box. We can later refine that to only check for the district. And with that, we have completed the third step, so we can do end recording on that one. And then we shall do the final step, which is verifying that the shown map matches an expected image. So now we have to create this verification. So first I will close this dialog and then insert a screenshot verification for the displayed map. And now we also give this screenshot verification a proper name. And insert it. And with that we are done with the last step. So we enter the recording and now um, uh, the Gherkin editor already shows me that all steps are implemented, so all those warnings have begun. And in the um, steps.rb, the Ruby file, the recording has been generated. So for each step, the actions which were recorded, either interactions or also verifications, have been um, uh, inserted. So now let's run this test and see what's happening. So now also on the execution we get the control bar shown and it highlights the step which is currently being executed and on the left side you see the application being run and everything passed so we see um, the feature in the feature file everything highlighted in green and from here I will switch to a prepare test suite where I have done a few more things so here you see that I have written several scenarios for testing going to a location. The first one is what we just implemented, but here for example if a scenario outline where a set of steps is being executed for several sets of data which are specified using the examples table. And um, 
I've also done other scenarios testing ambiguous addresses, non-existing addresses. And what uh, uh, you can also see is that in the step implementations we can use for example placeholders to map certain data which is passed in uh, to variables which is then being used so we can easily reuse a certain step implementation for um, uh, the step with different sets of data. And uh, what we can just do as an example is to, for example, um, change something here to a wrong expected value and just executing this one um, scenario so you see a bit more about the reporting features for behavior driven testing and squish. So now this um, example is being executed um, for three rows of data. Now it's done for the second row of data and in a second we will get the uh, execution for the third row of data which is happening now and when it's done we will now see that this scenario failed most of it passed but actually in the second row of data um, the district was wrong and therefore this is highlighted in red and if you want to drill down into the details you can still look at the results view which gives all the details but the um, uh, the reporting which is integrated into the Gherkin editor is very nice to have a good overview of what is happening. So there is much more about BDD um, testing within Squish but uh, with this I wanted to give a very brief overview of what's possible. Um, we will certainly do um, several more videos, write much more documentation um, to um, give all information about what is possible. But with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and that's it for today.